You welcome back. This is Breakfast Daily and we still having conversations, you know, that concerns all of us in this country. Now, when was the last time you went to the market, you know, to purchase any food item? Well, if you haven't done that in a long time, I believe that you've also had conversations. Now, I also believe that, you know, whatever you are even buying from restaurants, from chop bars, wherever you go, you can tell, you know, the reduction in food sizes, especially for the same um, amount of money that you, 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 you pay usually. And this is as a result of not having enough. Now, there have been some, uh, a lot of conversations going on. Now, one of this conversation that is being had is the national buffer stock, you know, um, intending to roll out initiative to stabilize food prices. Now, this is very key because the complaints are getting too much. Now, my colleague Duke Mensa Opoku has a report on this. Let's take a look. According to official government statistics, the cost of food is one of the drivers of inflation in the country. Inflation crossed the 30% mark this month. To help deal with this challenge, which is impacting negatively on the cost of living, the National Food Buffer Stock Company intends to release its stock onto the market to drive down prices. CEO of the company, Hanan Abdul Wahab, made this known during a visit by the Speaker of Parliament to the company. Mr. Speaker, I would also be happy to also share this information with you. To, there is also uh, an ongoing consultation between the, mini, um, the Greater Accra Regional Minister uh, and, and, and the Buffer Stock Company Limited. They are looking at the situation whereby, for the meantime, um, government would see how best it can buy foodstuffs, bring it to the major markets where, uh, where we can help in the price stabilization as other actors in the in the market are taking advantage of 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 of, of, of government inability to to provide this alternative to to to, to sell their commodities uh, to consumers uh, at any price that they think it fits and some of them are making unrealistic profits taking advantage uh, of the situation to make unrealistic uh, profits he also bemoaned the unhealthy business practices by some middlemen in the agricultural value chain. We have to deal with this issue of middlemen and then also try as much as possible to cut the foreigners from buying. Because the reality is that if we have the money to buy, why would the Ghanaian farmer sell to a foreigner uh, living in a, a government of Ghana? You understand? We also have to pay them the realistic price at the, uh, at, 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 uh, uh, the farm gate prices, buy and then stock. I don't see ourselves getting to, to that point. Food shortage, I'm not sure would um, have food. So there is food uh, in the system, but the reality has to do with the fact that some few individuals are controlling it, and that shouldn't be the case because, you see, this is a very great um, weapon. If you are not careful, people will hold the whole the entire country into ransom. The Speaker pledged the support of Parliament to ensure that the company lives up to its mandate. Uh, clearly, we can see that one of the biggest challenges they have is that of funding. Uh, to be able to achieve the objective of the company, we cannot just open them up to commercial sources of funding. Uh, it's not just sufficient to give seed money. I think government will have from time to time to come in to give them some financial support to be able to keep the, the, the prices to the levels we usually refer to as affordable. All right, so that report there um, by our colleague, Duke Mensah Poku. Now, uh, we have um, Edward Kariwe, who is the General Secretary of the uh, GAWU, General Agricultural Workers Union, on the line with us. Good morning, uh, Mr. Kariwe. Yeah, good morning, sir. Yeah, um, how are you doing this morning? And welcome to Breakfast Daily. Yeah, it's a bright morning. Yeah. It's very hopeful. Good morning. All right. So, um, so give us a sense of what, where you stand, what you feel is the actual um, factors that the actual factors that are driving up the cost of uh, production from the farms. Well, um, a number of uh, uh, factors here, and then uh, you have to look at them in, in three uh, stages. Uh, they are in three main classes. You have production challenges, you have post-harvest losses challenges, 
and then you have the marketing challenges. Okay. So if you look at the production side, um, before you can talk about output, then you need to put some input there. So you are talking about appropriate input uh, for farming. Mm -hmm. And these are major, the major ones include fertilizer, uh, seed, uh, chemical, and then uh, labor. Now, for, for last year, for instance, there have been a major shortfall in the input for agriculture. You know, fertilizer is a major input to the extent that the fertility of the soil will determine to a large extent the quantity that or the yield that you get yeah. on your farm. Yeah. Now, that one is uh, linked to the quality of the seed. Okay. Unfortunately, last year, we had ma major challenges of fertilizer, particularly at the time that the farmers needed the fertilizer to uh, apply on their farm. So even if we got the two for last year, was bound to, 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 to be low because of the low application of fertilizer. Okay. Apart from that, there was no fertilizer, and because most, much of the fertilizer was smuggled out, and which the ministry lamented over the smuggling of fertilizer. And then coupled with the natural disasters, the spillage of the battery dam, which swept crop away livestock and even human beings. Apart from that, even our internal disasters, where there were so much flood in the northern part, to the extent that in the upper west region, even newly constructed asphalt roads were washed away. Mm. So all these things put together put Ghana to a trajectory of low output at the end of 2021. So much of the food we are consuming today is one that has been brought from last year. We are now about to get new maize into the system. We are, those who are in irrigation are harvesting rice. But by and large, all that we are consuming this year, particularly when it comes to cereal, is what we produced last year. So it is the last year's output, which, if it were high, would help to drive down prices uh, this, 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 this year. Hmm. Apart from that, we all now know that today the effect of the uh, Russia-Ukraine war has aggravated the situation. Hmm. And um, because the economy is linked up to, is strongly linked to the global economy, I mean, we had, we are getting the full impact of it. Then the fuel prices, the transport costs, and so on the bad roads, and so on. So mm -hmm. all these things now is aggregated to give the price that we are having. Mm. Now, um, how exactly um, is the National Buffer Stock um, you know, initiative going to help? Uh, I, I, if, if you can help us to understand the perspective of uh, rolling out this new initiative from the National Buffer Stock. Well, let's put it that, you see, the buffer stock uh, company operations is, is like a middleman. Okay. In fact, it has fallen in the category of middleman. Okay. Uh, the, the middlemen don't produce themselves. Mm -hmm. And they don't consume themselves. Okay. So they are the link between the producer and the consumer. Mm. So they convey the food from where it is produced to where it is needed most, that is to the consumer. Yeah. So their role is very, very critical in the uh, agricultural value chain. And buffer stock object, uh, uh, I mean, basically, is to mop up produce at the time that it is low, and then store it and release it into the market when prices are high. Okay. This is a fantastic objective. But then you need to operationalize the objective. Mm. The buffer stock has been in, in operation for over t uh, 10 years. Uh, the major I mean, uh, challenge of the buffer stock is to have enough money to buy stocks in huge quantities and store against the lean season. And this is acknowledged by the uh, CEO of the buffer stock himself. Mm. Now, if the buffer stock company is telling us that they are going to release their stocks, into the market. So what we need to ask them is that what quantity do they have? Mm. Okay. You see, when they are the very people who are complaining that they, 
you have a major problem is lack of money to buy stocks in these countries to store. What quantities do they have? Yeah. And how long will that last? And what is the the shortage, the shortfall of food in our market? Hmm. You need to look at their quantity and the shortfall to see whether their quantity would even be enough to uh, in, fill impact. the uh, void. Yeah. So it is a, a good idea, but where I stand and what I know about buffer stock, it simply does not have enough to drive down prices. Yeah. In fact, it's going to be an exercise in fertility. It is not going to have uh, impact. It is not going to change the price level uh, at all because they simply do not have enough food to fill the market to drive down prices. Mm. Right now, let, let's look at uh, or assess the work of the buffer stock um, over the years uh, in terms of looking out for the farmers because that is their primary mandate just to make sure that the farmer, I mean, get good um, prices. The farmer has a ready market, you know, subsidies are also held in and all that. How would you assess the buffer stock's work in this regard over the years? Well, I the thing that the buffer stock has fallen into the same institutions like we, we have, you know, we have very good institutions in this country, public institutions, but then with laudable objectives, mandate, and so on. But they are simply need not to be able to function and function well. Hmm. The buffer stock company is unique, and its major thing is to have resources to buy when uh, there's glass in the market, or to mop up what cannot be sold. At the, uh, during harvest, they just simply do not have that money. They don't have the money to do that. So this performance has been at this map over the period. What they could only do was to have stocks to supply once in a while to the uh, uh, free SHS and then the school feeding and so on. As we are all aware, it's an open secret that uh, the free SHS and then the other school feeding program, and much of their produce is also even imported. To the extent that beans, rice are imported and taken up uh, to the schools. So the buffer stock performance has not been good enough, and I think that if we indeed we, 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 we want institutions to work, we should let them work by supporting them. So over the period, it has been abysmal. And I don't see how they can suddenly, in, in this crisis, look, we are in, we are, we are in, in June, end of June. Do they think to say that from February onwards, when the prices were going up, they were not aware of it, or they were strategically waiting for it to get to June this time, then before they can now release their stocks into the market? It simply means that they just do not have those stocks. Mm. They just don't have it. So it, it, it's not to say... Once we need our stocks into you, but you are not going to change anything at all because we have not prepared ourselves for it. If mm -hmm. we are going to do it subsequently, that will be okay. Mm. Now, now let, let's look at moving forward. Now, this is what a buffer stock has said, but moving on, how is the Ghanaian farmer, you know, um, prepping themselves to support all of us, especially in the wake of a possible um, food shortage, not just in Ghana, you know, across board. You've just made reference to the um, Russian-Ukrainian war, you know, with everything we are losing in terms of um, fertilizer, in terms of farm um, input. How is the Ghanaian farmer positioning himself just to make sure that we have enough and we will not be found wanting in any possible food shortage worldwide? Well, thanks for the question. I think that the issue is not about the Ghanaian farmer. It has to be a national policy. This crisis is beyond the individual. Mm. Farmers today have cut down their farm size for 2022 because the cost of maintaining the farm is so high. Fertilizer, uh, land preparation, chemicals, and so on. So the farmer is completely constrained to do much to increase food production. What other countries are doing, for instance, if you take Ethiopia, which depended mainly uh, on uh, Ukraine for wheat and the rest, under the North African country, what they have done is that they are increasing support to their farmers who are producing wheat, because we don't know when the war will be over. 
So what we need to do as a country today is to increase investment in agriculture. Mm. And government must take the lead. We hear that government says it does not have money and we are taking a policy to cut down budget reallocation to uh, all uh, 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 government agencies and ministries. We can do that. We need to take those steps. But it does not mean that we should do the same for uh, uh, agriculture. Mm. In fact, it could be that once we are cutting down our expenditure in other sectors, we are increasing expenditure in agriculture because it is critical. However, the problem also within the agriculture sector is that there's a lot of leakage. And much as we are asking government to increase investment in agriculture to increase food production, they should also make sure that the leakages are blocked. Today, government policy is to the effect that they are reducing investment in agriculture. One, government subsidy has been reduced from 36% in 2021 to 15% this year the total quantity of fertilizer that was subsidized in 2021 uh, is far more than what is going to be subsidized this year mm -hmm. that's under the uh, 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 plan for food and jobs uh, 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 subsidy program mm -hmm. now and then the farmers themselves given the cost of uh, price and transportation and everything they themselves do not have the income to pick, maintain their farms so the overall effect of what we are doing this year is that we are investing less in agriculture. Right. So, so um, with everything you've said and how we are moving, you know, in terms of investment in agriculture, what will likely happen in the next two years in terms of food security if nothing changes? Well, um, for the immediate, that is next year, that is 2023, mm -hmm. we are going to depend on the output uh, from 2022. And because investing less, we don't even still know what the natural factors will happen to us. Mm. But signs have been given to us that the, the winds this year are going to be still very unfriendly to us. We are seeing the floods already in the southern part, and the winds are now moving to the northern part, the middle part, and the northern part. So if we are uh, unfortunate to have more uh, uh, disasters like floods, coupled with the, our low uh, output, I mean, our low size production and then low application of fertilizer. Total output of agriculture at the end of 2022 is going to be low. And if it look, between January to March, June, there's going to be in the lean season. And at that point, too, there will be prices will go up further. So we are not doing so much about it. We can't do so much. The only thing we can do is to preserve food. Uh, uh, against it, and government decision to ban export is also laudable as a way of retaining food. Then government will now and make sure that they move to, so that within that lease season, uh, but going beyond 2023 is to begin to uh, depend less on imports for sustaining our agricultural production. For instance, the planting for food and jobs program, over 90% of their inputs are imported. And major input is fertilizer yeah. and industry. And over 90% of it is imported into this country. You can't run a massive program of this nature for a long period by depending on imports. Yeah. So we need to uh, make sure that we produce the fertilizer uh, in the country and we shift to the uh, uh, organic fertilizer production. And these things will take time. But the worry is that it's not just about having these ideas. The worry is that if you look at our uh, attitude in, in uh, uh, previous policy implementation, it has been bad. We don't uh, uh, implement the policies to specification, to the letter, and we don't also even implement them to what they are supposed to. Mm. So if we do not uh, have an attitude going into the future as to how we are going to do our implementation of policies. We may have a good policy today, but come the next two, three years, that policy is not implemented and we'll still be where we are or things will be worse. All right. right. Um, Mr. Gary, a quick comment on whether, uh, what impact um, profiteering has on the rising cost of food. Just a quick 30 seconds. This one is, is normal. It's rational. 
And that is the reason why the middlemen are in business. Mm. That is to buy at a lower price, they store it. When the prices go up, then they send Take it. Advantage by of then they are in care costs, and then they also make some margins on it. Mm. How much margins they will make on it is uh, dependent on uh, it's case by case. And okay. that is the reason why I think government set up the mm. Lafayette Store Company to help, you know, moderate mm. the, the, the middleman attitude mm. of, uh, of exploiting the system. Yeah. So that when they want to over-exploit the system, the Buffalo Store Company will release into the market. Yeah. But this is an institution which has a good uh, objective that has been poorly to that role well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kariwe. Uh, Edward Kariwe is the General Secretary of the General Agricultural Workers Union. Well, hmm. from, uh, well, for me, uh, well, well, <laughs> so for me, I think that whatever the National um, Buffer, Buffer Stock. Stock is trying hmm. to do, they should really do it and yeah. be up and doing because quite honestly their mandate they are not discharging very well mm. um mr carrie mentioned that mm. you know the objective i don't see how they are realizing that yeah. because if you are here to um help and to also promote uh, for instance job creation mm. if farmers are cutting their farms into yeah. smaller sizes we are losing employment yeah. there you know yeah. if you're supposed to be serving as uh, a foreign exchange earner mm. are we exporting do we yeah. even have enough you know yeah. and this is what um, um the buffer stock should be looking at mm. do we even have enough yeah. to consume you know yeah. how are we it's promoting tough. um uh, the consumption of local mm. produce we started the uh, uh, Ghana Rice campaign. Yeah. What happened to that? Yeah. You know, a private entity had to start that. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, I mean, uh, fair enough. Mm -hmm. We can't start it. But what did they even make of it? Yeah. You know, today what has happened yeah. to farmers in rice production? You know, so much, so much. I think that the national buffer stock is not doing what they are supposed mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. They are being mm -hmm. lazy about the whole thing, and you need to be up and doing. Good morning, Mr. Hanan. But you guys need to do much more. <laughs> I'll take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.